Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be, and welcome to a very special interview of the Final Cut podcast. And today I have a very special guest. She is an actress. She starred in various TV shows in England, but she is well known as playing Holly Barton Emmerdale. So, ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you Sophie Powells. First, Hi, Dina. Yeah. Hi, uh, Sophie. First, so I suppose the inevitable question is, first of all, how are you doing? Uh, I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? I'm not too bad, thank you very much. I'll good. just get straight into it. You obviously played Holly Barton on Emmerdale, and she didn't have what an easy life, did she? There was always some drama with her. So, as an actress, how challenging was it for you? Um, firstly, you know, Emmerdale was the best three and a half years of my life. I really loved every minute of it <laughs> and I was really so lucky to work with the best cast and crew yeah. the most hard working cast and crew um, and I learned so much on that job um, and then obviously I had the amazing opportunity to play Holly Barton which was just a dream role to play really obviously it was very harrowing and very hard but um, I think it was a really important storyline and hopefully well I know from speaking to people it helps a lot of people and raised a lot of awareness of addiction mm. especially in young people and um, so yeah I think it, it was really hard but worth every minute and yeah I just loved it. So obviously being an actress I'm assuming you did your homework for the storylines you were in so how much time did you actually have to prepare for it for each storyline you were in? Um, we had the most amazing producer who's sadly no longer with us anymore mm. but um, he took me into the office and just said you know we're thinking of doing a storyline where Holly will develop an addiction with heroin. Um, um, but they wanted me to feel really supported and um, have all the support and help I needed to tell the um, story as best as I could and as authentic as possible and as truthful as possible. And the producer was Gav Gavin Blythe, who was the most amazing man. And honestly, Gavin and the team just gave me so much help and support and guidance they put me in touch with um, a drugs counsellor called Danny, who's an amazing man. He was working for a charity called DISC. Um, I worked one-on-one -on -one with a heroin addict and her mum. And as a family, uh, on-screen family, we all went and had a meeting. Um, and um, the drug, the, the um, addict that I was working with was very open and honest with me and gave me as much information as she could. And, yeah, it, it was great just to have Danny or another member of the team on the end of the phone at any point to ask questions and if I wasn't sure how to play something or how Holly would feel after taking a drug or where I'd be in my journey with withdrawal all I had to do was ring Danny or a member of the team and they'd guide me through it and help me and just give me so much help and advice um, and I think that's why it was so um, authentic and real and truthful and yeah we just wanted to tell it right because it's such an important story. Yep. First thing of uh, drama, first rule of drama is always try and make it as lifelike as possible. I actually admire that. Oh, thank yeah. you. So, as obviously as an actress, there is a challenge like you've just said about playing Holly, who was a drug, who was a drug addict, and she was ad addicted to heroin. So, whatever role you've taken on, what has been the easiest and the hardest to prepare for? Oh, um, I think. No job's ever easy, really, because I care so much. Yeah. So much. I think there's never been one that's felt easy. I think it's felt fun, and I felt very grateful and lucky to do it, but it's never been easy. Yeah. Um, I suppose the hardest job I've ever had to do was probably a musical I did last year, um, and that was really scary to sing on stage for the first time in, long, in a long time and dance. So you're not just thinking about acting. You're also singing and dancing and acting at the same time. So there's a lot going into it. You know, you don't just have to remember your lines. But yeah. You have to remember choreography and lyrics and music and come in at the right time and not miss the beat. And which, um, yeah, that that was probably the hardest because there's a lot of pressure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was so fun and I loved every minute. So you were nervous, basically. But once you got into a stride of it, you were perfectly fine with it. Oh, I'm always nervous, Dino. Before I go on stage, I'm so nervous. But the minute I get on stage or on set, I'm fine. And I'm, I'm always nervous, so I know how you feel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, as I've continually stated, you're an actress. Do you tend to go for a certain role or are you open to new challenges? I love a challenge. Um, 
I just love storytelling. I love being given the opportunity to play different characters and important stories. So yeah, I'm really open to well anything really. I just I just love the opportunity to do what I love. So yeah. And it's not just Emmerdale you've been in. Like I previously said, you sat in DL and Pasco and Hobbesy. Is there any shows you'd like to do on to to go on? Sorry, that you haven't uh, done before. Oh, where do I start? I just think, in especially in the UK at the moment, well, all over the world, there's just mm. the most incredible, there's the most incredible um, dramas at the moment, drama series, and just to be part of any of them, there's some amazing British dramas that have been on some comedy series that are. At, I mean, Staff Let Slats is probably one of my favourite mm. comedy series. I think it's so funny. And um, so to work with um, Jamie Dimitri and um, Natasha, that would just be amazing. Um, oh, I don't know. Oh, there's any, any like amazing British drama series or American drama series or and even Orthodox. You know, it was um, it was any. I can't even. I'm just, to be honest, I've been blown away, especially yeah. in lockdown with the amount of incredible talent on TV and the amazing drama series and the storytelling and the, the everything, the writing, the direction, the cast, the crew. It's, I've just been blown away, to be honest. So I think to be a part of any new or pre-existing drama series would be a real dream of mine. Oh, but if I was to say to you, Lufa, with, with Idris Elba, would you be up for it straight away? Absolutely, I loved that, especially the first season. I just thought that was amazing. It's probably him and, and Idris Elba and Ruth Jones and that were just yeah. such an amazing duo, and I loved it so much. And it's, and it's Idris Elba. Who wouldn't want to star with him? I mean, I know. <laughs> He's amazing. So one last word on Emmerdale before we uh, move on. Holly's, yeah. Holly's died, unfortunately, but as we have seen in So Planned on many, many an occasion... Nothing is impossible. So if they called you up and said, we'd like you to come back for an, for a cameo episode, would you be up for it? Um, I'd never say never. I mean, I had the time of my life working there and my best friends work on the show, um, both cast and crew. So, yeah, I'd, I'd never say never. I really just so had the best time there. <laughs> so what is your dream role? What if someone gave... What is your dream role? I think to be in a British drama or a British film or or, or a really cool play on the West End. Um, I absolutely love Shane Meadows. He's been my favourite director and writer and filmmaker for as long as I can remember. And I remember watching Dead Man's Shoes with Paddy Constantine and, and just thinking... I need to work with these people. <laughs> and they are the reason I do what I do. You know, yeah. I, just, I love improvisation and just having the opportunity just to be on set with a group of amazing actors and creatives and just be able to play and just bounce off each other would just be the most amazing opportunity. So, yeah, I think probably to work with Shane Meadows would be my yeah. biggest dream. Because uh, that's the first dream I can remember having within acting, like... Mm just to work with him and all, everyone that he works with. Every actor that he's ever worked with is incredible, yeah. <laughs> all of them. So, yeah. yeah. You did mention earlier about how you in, how you're in the music business, I've saw, but would you like to go into it if the opportunity presented itself? Oh, I don't know if I'd want to go into them. I love music. Yeah. Like, I absolutely love music. There isn't a day where I don't listen to music. Um, and I go to live music events as often as I can. Um, but I'd probably, I probably would go into the music industry, but I love yeah. musicals, so I'd love to be in more musicals. I've really, really grown to love musicals over the last few years. I really have. Yeah. In well, fact, they're just so amazing. Yeah. I, I mean, there's so many different and diverse and amazing musicals now. You know, it's not, they're not, they're not just the old school ones. You know, there's so many current and yeah. modern stories being told that are really, actually really important. Um through the form of musicals and I think it's amazing you know everyone's talking about Jamie and um, I think is one of my favorite musicals I've watched it six times which I'm not I'm not I'm not ashamed to admit it <laughs> but um, I just absolutely love it and um, it's a real feel-good 
musical, a real, I don't know, I think it's um, really life-affirming and really important. And, um, yeah, I think musicals are very powerful. Mm. You can really reach a lot of people and spread some really amazing messages through music and dance and yeah. storytelling. So, it, I've got a recommendation for you since you mentioned theatre. Uh, before we had lockdown, I actually went to see Anne Juliet at Shaftesbury Avenue, and it is absolutely brilliant, and it's funny as well. Really? Yeah. I'll try. Well, when things all kick off again, hopefully, soon. Yeah. I mean, because that's the thing. I'm, I'm part of a group of 26 actors at the moment. We're called Isolation Ensemble. Yeah. And we, we've been trying to raise money for regional theatre, mm. because obviously regional theatre is so important. I mean... Any creative, anyone in the creative industry knows that, you know, without regional theatre, there's no, it puts a lot of opportunities down, you know, for anyone, whether you're an actor, um, a dancer, a musician, a writer, director, stage manager, front of house, regional theatres where creatives and people in the creative industry get most of their, like, first opportunities. And then they work their way up, or then they get an opportunity in the West End. It's very rare that people just go straight into the West End. So that's why I think regional theatre is so important, just for opportunity. And it makes theatre accessible, it's affordable, you know. Some people can't get to London or can't afford to get to London Mm. for whatever reason. And regional theatre is just a really great thing for making it accessible and affordable and providing opportunity. So that's why I think it's so important that, we need to kind of fight to keep regional theatre alive and going. Yeah. I entirely agree. I could not agree with you anymore on that point. <laughs> right, so as a lot of people have done, a lot of actresses or actors go behind the camera as well as in front of it. So is that an avenue that you'd like to explore? Yeah, I do it quite a lot, actually. Not a lot of people know, but um, I produced my boyfriend's first feature film. Oh, did you? Um, yeah, The Salt Trail, Um I don't know if it's online at the moment because it's doing a, it's um, been doing some screenings, but um, it's called the Salt Trail. And basically, when I left Emmerdale the first time, mm. we went travelling for six months and we made a feature film. It was a surf film, travel film, and we had a lot of fun doing it. And we just wanted to create something together. I'm often assisting at shoots or um, behind the camera set dressing or um, running. I get called the dog's body a lot because I kind of do anything. I just <laughs> I don't really mind if I'm uh, the actors on set or any. I, don't, I just love being on set. I love being on, in the theatre. I love being on film and TV set. I just love being around creative people yeah. within the industry. And I'll kind of do anything. So they all call me the dog's body because yeah. I will kind of just do anything as long as I'm amongst it. So. Yeah. So shall we talk? We'll talk a bit more about uh, the movie, shall we? What exactly is it about? Oh, it's my boyfriend's new movie that is coming out in September, hopefully. It's called Chasing the Present. And basically, um, about four and a half years ago, my boyfriend and a friend of his, we were all just discussing how there's a global pandemic a pandemic before before this actual pandemic um, of mental health. You know, everyone was struggling. Everyone seemed to be really suffering with their mental health. Um whether it was depression, anxiety, suicide rates were going up. People were just feeling lost. And um, after lots of discussions, my boyfriend and a friend, um, Mark Waters and James Sebastiano, decided to try and do do something. And as um, Mark's a filmmaker and James um, is someone who just wants to help, he's an amazing guy, they decided to try and create a film together to go and find some answers and explore different routes and ways of living and alternative therapies and yeah. what, what people could do to kind of heal themselves from within and, and just help people with their mental health and help anyone who is feeling lost, anxious or depressed. Mm. And it, it was an independent film, so they've both given a lot of time, money, energy and effort. They've travelled, they've spoken to so many amazing people within the field and they've made the most beautiful film that I honestly think has changed my life. And I think it will help so many people. Um, and to go with the film, they've also done a summit in collaboration with Hay House. Yeah. And it's um, a mental health summit where they've got loads of professionals and people within that kind of world. And talking about different ways of living, meditation, healthy mm. living, yoga. Yeah. 
and it's really really amazing so yeah that's out now the summit with chasing the present for hay house and it's online and um, and i think that will really help well i know that's really helping people and people are really enjoying that and finding it really helpful helpful and then the film will be out in september and i was production assistant on that so i was really happy to be involved with such a an amazing project sounds amazing from what you've just said um mm-hmm. so we know what one of your passions is, so let's talk about uh, what the rest of your passions are. Because you're a patron, aren't you? Yes, I am. I'm, I'm patron for um, Sunflowers Children Action Group. Um, that's a group providing, you know, it, it provides special days for children with life-limited um, illnesses or anything that limits their life or quality of life and also children that are threatened, you know, yeah. in one way or another. So basically, any children who haven't got the same opportunities that other children may do, whether it's due to um, situation they're living in or illness or life-threatening illness. Um, the Sunflowers Children Action Group um, try and give them some great days and great memories and um, a bit of escape and yeah. a bit of joy. And so it's a group of people who really are bringing a lot of joy to some children's lives. And, and, and not just children, the families, you know, and siblings who often are suffering just as much, but because they're not the child that poorly, they often get overlooked. So it's just, they're an amazing group of people who really are bringing a, a lot of joy and some beautiful days to families and children that are suffering. And then I'm also a patron for Zebedee Management. I'm an ambassador and a patron for Ze- Zebedee Management. And um, my friend Zoe Proctor started it up. Um, she was a plus-size model, and she just, as she got older and had children and looked, a bit more closely at the industry or maybe step back from it a little bit and after being so involved in the industry she realised there's a real gap and a real lack of representation for models with um, disabilities and alternative appearances you know there wasn't anyone representing those people you know people who are so talented and amazing but happen to have a disability or an alternative appearance and there's no one really representing these people in the acting or modelling industry or the creative industry. So Zoe and Laura, her sister-in-law, started up Zebedee Management and they started a performance art group, a performance art group that was every Tuesday night and it's an amazing place. I, I used to go every week and we all come together and sing and dance and talk and share and are creative and that's an amazing safe space they've created for people with disabilities or additional needs and then they've also started the agency which is absolutely amazing and I couldn't be more proud to be associated with it and involved and um, they're just providing really amazing opportunities you know they're really changing the way the industry is you know it needed more diversity and equality and honest representation of the people of Britain and the world you know Mm. everybody doesn't walk around looking perfect well in society's opinion of what perfect is you know there are people in wheelchairs there are people with missing limbs there are people with scars there are people with um vertiligo and albinism and you know of all different looks and everyone's beautiful and that's a true representation of people so we really urged people to use our models you know to advertise their clothes and whatever they're doing, to tell their stories, to be in the TV shows, to be a true representation of people living in the world. And it's been amazing. I mean, one of the models, Ellie, she was just modelling for Gucci. Um, We've had the whole campaign at River Island where labels are for clothes, not people. Um, And it's just really, really great to see a true representation and, um, and also models being used because they're brilliant and they're talented and they're really lovely people, not for tokenism. Mm. So I do, Zoe and Laura have really made such an impact on the industry and it's just amazing and I'm just so proud and inspired by them and just seeing everything that they're doing and the lives they're changing and the opportunities that they're creating. It's really, really amazing. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and then aside from that, obviously, I, um, I'm also a ambassador for um, another friend that I'm incredibly proud of, my um, best friend, Jordan, um, Jordan Brompton. Um, four years ago, her and her friend Lee started a startup called My Energy, 
they really wanted to make a difference in the world and were really passionate about renewable energy and green energy. And they started My Energy, which is um, it's um, basically they're a UK innovator and manufacturer of green energy products for smart home and energy management. Yeah. So they're they're really just trying to make um, um, like solar energy and well, just renewable energy. They're trying to make it accessible for everyone because obviously the sooner we all stop burning fossil fuel fuel fuels and driving really polluting cars, the mm. better. Um, and they've actually created the world's safest and the world's best um, electric vehicle charger called the Zappi. So it's just amazing, you know, from this small town I'm from, um, just to see these people really changing the world and taking really brave, amazing, big steps. And yeah, I'm, just, I'm really, really proud and really proud and honoured to have been asked to be part of these initiatives and these um, companies. So it's really amazing. Wow. You are quite the busy little bee, aren't you? Say that again. You are quite the busy little bee, aren't you? Got I am. So I am. much I going like on. I like to keep busy. Because I was about to, because uh, I'm a petrol head, and if I must admit, I think there is a bit of concern that electric is the future and petrol cars will soon be a thing of the past. So it's actually quite a smart thing to uh, invest in, really. Yeah, I just feel like we need to change. You know, I'm. Um... I'm vegan. I try and le- live as green and eco as I can, and just try and make as uh, I try and be a good human on the planet mm. and be kind to people and the world. And just, so, for me, I just think it's really, really important. I mean, I'm not in a position at the moment to have an electric car, but fingers crossed, one day I will be. <laughs> hopefully, we all will have. Oh. Yeah, hopefully, fingers crossed. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> So, if uh, people want to find you on social media, how would they go about it? So, I'm on Instagram. Um, it's sophie.powells. And I'm on Twitter. I think it's Sophie Powells. And I think that's about it. I'm not the most active person. <laughs> I'm a bit of a nana with technology. Um, oh, but you. I do try my best. Um, and I keep in touch with a lot of family and friends. On I, I think the thing I love about Instagram, it's almost like a, a postcard, you know, to like everyone keeping in touch and seeing what everybody's up to so it's quite cool i think if, if, i think um, it can be quite a powerful thing if used in the right way to spread some really powerful amazing messages wow i shall immediately uh follow you on instagram so, <laughs> and so and on being the first ambassador and patron i've had on my chats uh sophie powers everyone thank you so lovely talking to you dina